So we are going to try to calculate the total elongation for this bar, which is made by the three materials. And the difference for these three materials is already shown with the different stress strain diagram. We are going to calculate each segment at different time. So now let's take a look at the material A. Since we already had the stress strain diagram, the first thing we need to do is actually find out what is the real stress in this segment. So the real stress in the segment A for the material A is going to be 509 PSI. And then from the picture, we are going to see the yield stress at A is 700. So which means the real stress will be smaller than the yield stress. So what does this mean is we are still in the elastic range, which means the formula we derived from the linear equations will be, will be usable. So the length for material A will be 10 inch. So now what is the Young's modulus? for the material A. So what we are going to do is go to the stress strain diagram and then we are trying to use the linear part to calculate the Young's modulus. So which means we can use... So finally we find out the deformation in the material A is going to be this amount. So now we can move to the material B again. We need to calculate the real stress in the B material. However, we can see the internal force is going to be uh, the same, 100 caps. However, the cross-sectional area increase, which means the stress is actually going to be decreased, which means the real stress in this Material B will be smaller than that in the material A. And then the yield stress for material B is going to be higher than the material A, so which means we will still going to be in the linear range. So the deformation in the material B, we can still use PL over AE to calculate. However, what is the length we are going to use? Are we going to still use the 10 inches we used before? The answer is no. We have to use the length that you are trying to calculate for this segment. So we are actually going to use 12 inches. Again, how we are going to calculate the Young's modulus? We have to use the linear part in the material B to do the calculation. So you can choose any linear segment in the calculations. So for me, I am going to use the maximum stress and maximum deformation. So this is the total deformation in the material B. So which means we can move to the last material, material C. So now what we are going to do, we are going to do the same thing to calculate the real stress in the material C. We can see the force is the same, and then the cross-sectional area is the same. So now, from the picture, we can see the yield stress is 400, and the real stress is actually bigger than the yield stress. So what does this mean is our material is already entering the plastic range. So the deformation is not going to be linear anymore, and we are going to have the permanent deformation. And then the equation is not good. So how we are going to solve this problem? We need to use the interpolate to find out the real strain in the plastic range. So how we are going to use interpolate to find the strain? The method we are going to use is similar triangle. So let's take a look. On the stress strain diagram, this is the 510. And then 
what we need to do is try to find out what is the total deformation for this segment. And then can we just read directly from the stress strain diagram? The answer is no, because sometimes it's not drawing scale. It will be hard to find out the real value. So that's why we have to use a similar triangle to help us. So what we are going to do is actually try to build similar triangles. Let's take a look. So this is the big triangle we have, and the height will be in the base. It's going to be. And then what we are going to do is try to build another small triangle, which is the stress you need to use, 510. In this small triangle, you can see the height will be 510 minus 400, so which means it will be 110. And then this is the length we need to figure out. So based on the similar triangles, so is this the total deformation we want? The answer is no. We only find a part of them. Take a look at the geometry. So we only find this part. What we need to do is remember to add the permanent deformation here. So which means the total axial normal strain is equals to, so remember, we already find the deformation in the material A and B. So now let's take a look. Can we add these three values together? The answer is no. Why? Because the units, you can use the units to help you find out. So the previous answer we get is all in the inches, but from the stress strain diagram, we find something, and this is unitness. So which means they are totally different things. This is the deformation lens, and that one is a normal strain. So how we are going to connect the normal strain with the deformation, we have to go back to the original definition of the epsilon. So which means the total deformation in the material C will be the total normal strain we just obtained from the similar triangle and times the original length. So now check all the units here. It is in the inches now, so which means the total deformation will be these three parts add together. And finally, the total change, total elongation for this axial loaded bar is going to be 0.0856 inch.